Hello, welcome everybody. Welcome back. We've got people entering as we speak. That's brilliant. People pouring in as usual. Thursday already. How has it happened? I don't know. It comes around so quickly each week and I'm thankful oh. for it as well. <laughs> I <it's> know. <laughs> I look forward to it every week. Brilliant. We've got people coming in super speedily. Nice and quick this time. Dead on, dead on the clock. Lovely. Got some hellos coming into the chat as well. Always nice. We'll give everyone a second to get settled in, signed up, comfortable, get yourselves a drink. <laughs> lovely, lovely. <laughs> Lots of hellos. Perfect. All right, we're nearly there. I think a couple, maybe a minute longer. Lovely. Lizzie, can you hear me all clearly? Yeah, definitely. Can you hear me? Excellent. Yeah, we're all good. We're all good. <laughs> Hello to everybody. Hello, Alexander, Eleni. Hello, Sarah and Ellen. Michael and Charlotte. <laughs> Hello. Maya. Hello, Maya. And Ollie. Hello, Ollie. Brilliant. Another few seconds just to let everybody settle in. And then, as we always do, we will keep our doors open. So if anybody's late, they can just join us anytime. And bear in mind, these are always going to be put on our website as well. So you'll never miss out. And if you have to go halfway through, you can catch up with the rest online. Brilliant. Hello, everybody. I'm glad you're doing well. Perfect. <laughs> we did see a picture of a frog. I can see the question there and the answer is yes. That might be coming up later. Lucky you. <laughs> Perfect. All right then, Lizzie, do you think we should start? I'm ready whenever you are, Josie. Okay, I think we should get going. So I will pass over to you to do our introduction. Thank you. So hello everyone, welcome to Explorers at Home. This is week five, can you believe? Goodness. Um, so we are a part of Surrey Wildlife Trust. My name is Lizzie and to the side of me, I don't know which side, is Josie. <laughs> hello. And we are doing these sessions at 4pm every Thursday for a few more weeks, which is really exciting. We've got some cool topics coming up, um, but I'm going to pass you over to Josie because each se session has a game and things to get involved with. So if you are new, she'll quickly tell you how you can get involved. All right. So we're up to our fifth session now. So most of you know how to do this. So I'm going to say it very quickly. And if you're not sure if anything doesn't work for you, you can always just ask because your uh, cameras are off and you're not able to talk to us, except through the chat. It's a nice, simple way to communicate. In the middle at the bottom of your screen, there should be a little speech bubble button. And if you tap that or click it, then you should get a window open up where you can see messages uh, that we send to everybody and you can send us messages. You can't see each other's messages at the moment and that will stay that way, but we can read them out if we can share them. So tell us your stories, tell us what's going on for you and we can share that with everybody, that's perfect. I can see lots of hellos in there already, which is really nice. Besides that, we will also have polls, which are like little questionnaires that pop up on the screen. And to save time, we'll explain how to do those when we do the first one. So don't worry about that yet. And lastly, and very importantly, this is being recorded and it will go on our website afterwards. So please make sure that you're happy for that to happen and you will be able to catch up with it later, which is really handy. I think that's all I need to say really, Lizzie, isn't it? Yeah, you got through it quickly. Nice. Speedy. Let's go, let's go. What's our theme of this week, Lizzie? So each week we have a different theme and this week is weird wildlife. And weird doesn't mean bad. It's some pretty cool stuff that we're going to cover today. And we've covered some already. If you saw our first session, there was the rough bird, which was amazing and had cool summer plumage. And then last week was amphibians. So we had our great crested newts with their yellow sort of toenails. And they're all weird and wonderful creatures that we have here in Surrey and in the UK as well. So not just Surrey. Um, so we are kind of celebrating those creatures this week and things that they do. So our game is, of course, going to include some weird creatures. So that's what we're going to start with is our game. And I'm going to share my screen with you. Do let us know if you can't see um, anything that comes up. It should come up in just a moment. Great into okay. the game. We've got lots of people excited. 
<laughs> I love the game. <laughs> Me too. So our game is called Spot the Imposter. Is that everything okay for that, Josie? You've yeah, got... looks perfect. Good. Okay. So Spot the Imposter. Basically, we're going to show you three pictures of different animals and we want you to guess the odd one out. And it's an imposter. It might be because they're a mimic or something else. We're going to let you decide. So there'll be three options for you to choose from, A, B or C. And each picture has um, A, B or C on them. You pick the answer that you want. Um, it will come up in a poll for you and then you press submit. So we'll give it a go on the first one. We'll see if it comes up. So this is our first slide. So we've got A, B or C. Hopefully you can see those three pictures. You can move uh, the pictures of us out the way if they are covering something. And Josie should bring up a poll for you now, hopefully. All right. So I've clicked launch polling. That should pop up. It might be in the way. Don't worry if it is, you can drag it out of the way for you to see the options which are behind it. But it should show you a question. Now, if you're watching our recording back, you won't see the polls because they're not recorded. So what we'll do is we'll always read out the question and then you can play along anyway, because we'll tell you the answers after each question. If you are playing with the polls, then press the option you want and then click submit at the bottom and it comes through to us. We can see your results as they're pouring in. And after we've got all the results in, we can share the results to show you what everybody thought was the answer. So Lizzie, what's this question? <laughs> it is, uh, which one is the imposter? So it's the same for each um, slide that will come up. So which one do you think is the odd one out? We've got most of you have voted. If you haven't, give it a try. Um, or you can put it in the chat if, you're not sh if you don't want to do the poll, absolutely fine. I can see some people have put it in the chat and all of the people in the chat actually think that it's see so shall we end the poll Ooh, yes Three, let's two, see one okay seven, two, nice. one. yeah most of you guys said c so i think we got some good detectors a few of you said a and b and they all look a bit different to be honest but the answer is c because the first two so a and b are barks and bits of trees and c is a really really well camouflaged moth called a buff tip moth so hopefully it will come up on the screen for you now look how cool that moth is they are my favorite ones to find they're so well camouflaged and they're meant to sort of suit the silver birch trees that we have if you've ever seen one before let us know in the chat guys because they are my favorite ones to find absolutely gorgeous lovely it looks just like a twig it's incredible it's so clever. even the end looks like it's a snapped off bit of twig absolutely beautiful I think Ollie and Tyler have both seen one. Lucky them. Nice, nice. Okay, so number two, which one do you think is the odd one out here? A, B or C? Okay, the poll is open, everybody. So choose your option. We've got some easier questions and some more difficult questions. Mm -hmm. We always like to add a mix because but remember, everyone, we've got a big mix of ages who get involved with our little quizzes and our games. So we'll have a big range of questions. I'm going to give you another few seconds. <laughs> Eleni thinks it's obvious. Well, maybe not to everybody. We've got some votes for all of the options so far. Let's see. How cool would it be to see these animals? All three of these are really, really special things. They are. They're not always liked, but they have yeah. some incredible uses for us in the natural environment. Okay. One. Let's go. Here's the results, everyone. OK, so most of you guys <laughs> said A. Some of you said B and C. So B and C are the same uh, same type of creature. They are wasps, different types of wasps. And A is a wasp spider. And I think it's pretty cool. They're so Amazing. well camouflaged. It's meant to sort of mimic or look like the um, the what common wasp that we have here in the UK. This spider is actually harmless. It won't hurt you at all. Um, it just has those colours to look dangerous and scary and hope that birds and things won't eat it. Um, but yeah, so it's a mimic. It looks like other animals. Very cheeky, isn't it? Trying to look like something that could hurt you, but without actually being harmed, without having any danger at all. I think that's quite cheeky. It is very cheeky. It's cool though. <laughs> I haven't seen one before. I would like to see one. They what about cool. if I put on a tiger costume or a tiger print coat? 
maybe then people will think I'm a tiger and I'll be dangerous looking. <laughs> I guess it's like that. <laughs> okay, number three. So there are three birds on the screen. Which one do you think is the odd one out? Have a look. Maybe you might know them. Or they might be completely new birds to you. So have a guess. Give it a try, even if you're not sure. Which one do you think is the odd one out? It's a bit of a more difficult one this time. Mm -hmm. I like that people are thinking hard about it. They're all beautiful though, aren't they? All three of these are really special birds to see in the UK. I'd be delighted any day I saw all of them. Can you imagine? <laughs> Definitely. I do see one of them um, hovering over fields sometimes around where I am. But I don't, I don't think I've ever really seen the other two. Ah, well, let's see what people think. Last two seconds. Boop. There we go. Let's share those results. Oh, most of you said B, couple said A and C. Nice work, guys. So most of you are right. B is our odd one out. So um, A is a kestrel who you might see hovering over fields, checking, um, checking out for mice and things to eat. And C is a sparrowhawk who might come by and shoop, go past your bird feeders and catch some dinner sometimes. Um, but B is not a bird of prey. It's called a cuckoo. And they make that sound as well. They're pretty cool. They go cuckoo, cuckoo. And you don't hear them very often anymore, but they're pretty cool because this pretends to be like a sparrowhawk or a kestrel. It pretends to be like a bird of prey. Can you see its stripy tummy? Well, that colouring's there to look like a bird of prey. And when it flies, its outline is just like um, a kestrel or a sparrowhawk. So whenever a little bird sees the outline, they'll fly away and they might fly away from their nest to hide. And then that's when the cuckoo will fly in and it will um, head to the nest. It will check out the nest, see if it's all right. And it will lay an egg there, a secret egg that the other bird doesn't notice. So when that little bird comes back to check on its eggs and see how they're doing, they won't realise that there's a different egg there. There's a new egg. And they will raise that chick and that egg just like their own, a bit like this one here. If you can see, that is a cuckoo chick who is a lot bigger than that adult bird who's, I think, what is it called? A, is it a reed warbler? It is a reed warbler, yep. Nice. So they are pretty sneaky birds, if you ask me. They're pretty cool, though. Pretty cool. We've got in the chat, Lizzie, mm. Eleni says that uh, it's not a bird of prey, and A and C are birds of prey, which is a really well-spotted little thing there. Well done. Absolutely right. Cuckoos are not birds of prey, so they don't catch other animals to eat. And also, Eleni says that she's seen a kestrel who flies over the park next to them. How amazing is that? And they often have the same patch. They have a territory where they hunt regularly. So it's really nice to see kestrels. You might see the same bird regularly if you know the right places to go, which makes it even more special, I think, when you know the same bird. Definitely. That's beautiful. Let us know if you have seen any of those before, guys, especially a cuckoo or sparrowhawk. They're cool. And a kestrel, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> OK, next one. This one might seem easy, but so you might be able to guess which one is the odd one out. But can you think why it's included in here? So if you think you might know, put it in the chat. But it's um, a pretty cool thing. <laughs> yeah so it might be a little bit obvious which one's the odd one out this time but as Lizzie said the reason for it is really interesting so if you think you know the reason type it in the chat or if you're not able to use the chat just shout it at the screen all the same <laughs> <It always works. laughs> we'll tell you in a minute <laughs> we'll give you two minutes maybe not two whole minutes I think in fact everybody's voted three two one Oh, yeah. So you pretty much all said B. <laughs> and you're right. So that one is the odd one out. It is a fungi. It's called a stinkhorn. And did anyone say anything in the chat, Josie? Yes. In fact, Leah has got it absolutely right. Leah says it's because it smells like poo. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Libby even knows the name of it. Libby says my nana has stinkhorns in her garden. Well done. 
cool I they're know. so awesome they're such a weird looking fungi or mushroom and you're right it smells just like poo or a dead animal which is really gross to us but to flies that is the best thing that's what it's doing can you see that green sort of head to it well that is the stinky stuff basically and flies are attracted and not only is it stinky it's its spores so mushrooms spread out and grow with spores instead of um, like pollen in flowers and the flies will land on this they'll get that stuck to their feet it's pretty stinky and sticky and then they fly away the flies will land somewhere else and the spores from the stink horn will land there. And then that's where a stink horn might grow later on. So it's pretty cool. They and you can definitely so smell gross. one before you <laughs> see one. <laughs> they really look gross, don't they? Absolutely <laughs> amazing though. In fact, Tyler knew it was to attract insects. So bonus points to Tyler. Well done for your top fact. Nice. And uh, Sarah, who I suspect is an Ollie actually, if I know the person who's writing Oops, this, sorry. then... Uh, says they smell disgusting when I was in Wales I could smell them and you really do smell them before That's you so see gross. them they're powerfully smelly <laughs> <laughs> I do get excited though when you smell that I know that there's one nearby and I go on a hunt for one they're really cool <laughs> don't eat them though definitely don't eat them just look at them <laughs> just to be clear <laughs> okay so our next one has uh, snuck up on the screen and have a look at these three which one do you think's the odd one out this is one of our harder ones um we do like to test you sometimes yeah we've got some challenging questions too in fact it's a much more even spread of people's guesses this time mm -hmm. which means it's a harder question lots of guesses in the chat as well let's see people are guessing this time which is good that's good yeah always give it a try even if you're not sure Lots of people with a very good guess. In fact, they know that one of them is different because it's not a snake, but they're not sure which one it is. So that's <laughs> the fun. <laughs> Three, two, one, end calling. Let's see our results, shall we? Oh, okay. It is a, a kind of an even split, but mo there's a, more votes for B to be the odd one out. So the one in the middle and I think most of you are right. About 50% of you are right. It is B. That is the odd one out. And it's not actually a snake. So on the left, we've got an adder. Beautiful. And they start coming out at this time of year as well. And on the right, number C is a grass snake. But in the middle, it's not a snake at all. It's called a slow worm. So here's a picture of it. Hopefully it will come up. There we go. So that is a slow worm. It's a legless lizard, so not a snake. And there's a couple of differences that make means it's not a snake. It's got eyelids for one. Snakes don't have eyelids. And you know how a snake has a forked tongue to sense the world? Well, slow worms don't have that one either. So it's actually a lizard. And it just happens to look like a snake and have no legs because of the way it's evolved. So the way it's um, changed over time to adapt to where it's living kind of like how ducks have webbed feet and frogs do too and otters but they're not actually related are they they're not very similar so it's the same thing for our legless lizard here our slow worm and our snakes and maybe you guys might have seen them before I know some people find them in their compost heaps in their gardens sometimes so if you have ever seen one let us know they are pretty special creatures they're beautiful I think these animals are even more weird and wonderful because they're named so badly. They're not slow. They're actually quite quick when they want to be. And they're not worms. No. So the worst naming ever, but really fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Lovely. So our next thing is these. There's three options there. Have a look. Which one do you think our odd one out is? It might go. be quite, it might be obvious, it might not. Have a look. Even if you think it's an easy one, I think it highlights the purpose of this part of the body really, really well. In the chat, we've got some good suggestions I can see coming in. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Let's see. Oh, some very good guesses. Even to know exactly what type of animal the odd one out is, which is very impressive. Nice. Shall we see what everyone thinks, Lizzie? Give them five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Here we go. 
Nice. Most of you thought C, and you are right. So the first two pictures, A and B, are actual eyes. So we've got a fish and a owl there. Now on the right, our number C is not an actual eye. It just looks like one. It's from our beautiful peacock butterfly. They have that amazing eye pattern on their wings to scare off predators. And they're just incredible. I love how they've evolved to look like that. And I just love the, love the fact that they look like that. And what's really cool as well is not only do they have those eyes on their wings, but to deter a predator too, they can rub their wings together and it sounds like hissing. So that can scare off um, like predators and things that might want to eat them as well. They're beautiful. Maybe you've seen them in the summer flying around. They're always a pleasure to see. I love them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Should I go on to the next one? Yeah. All right. Now there's three options here. Which one do you think is the odd one out? These are some of my favorite things. They're <laughs> so cool. <laughs> let's see. Let's see answers pouring in straight away. You might think, well, what's this got to do with Surrey anyway? But actually it's got everything to do with Surrey. And this might be your new favorite animal too. If I, if I know anybody else in this group. <laughs> <laughs> We've got lots of good ideas coming in. Some people think that one of them might be an insect. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. Let's share those results. Lovely. Okay. Majority of you said A and you guys are right. So the um, middle and right hand one, B and C are scorpions, which obviously we don't have here in Surrey or in the UK. But on the left, we do have this little guy. He is a false scorpion. There you go. There's a better picture of him. And he's pretty cute. And we have them everywhere. You might not have seen one before because they are absolutely tiny. Absolutely tiny. tiny. Like <laughs> this big. That big. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll probably see them in leaf litter and things. So they're pretty cool. And they aren't related to scorpions at all. They have, again, evolved and adapted to have these pincers like scorpions to catch their food and all those little hairs are sensors as well to sort of sense the world around them so they are adorable very sweet they won't harm you again because they are tiny absolutely tiny but if you ever do check out what's in the leaf litter if you're looking for bigger animals like beetles always look at the small stuff too because they are pretty cool you know Weird they inject venom busy with those tiny little bits they Do inject they? venom into their even tinier prey they are so cute absolutely adorable completely harmless to us and so small you'll barely notice them and they're pseudo scorpions which means false scorpions because they're pretend ones really <laughs> only taken <laughs> <laughs> so that is our pseudo or false scorpions right last one guys which one is the odd one out a b or c this one's a bit more difficult this time. Like a challenging one. I always like a challenging one. Yeah, me too. It's always a bit of fun. I do like the easy ones because there's normally something silly to go with them. <laughs> oh, always. <laughs> Lovely Ooh. colours in these pictures. This looks kind of like art, this slide. Actually. Beautiful. So it's pretty. making me excited about sort of spring and all the flowers coming out, looking at that, and summer. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, nearly everyone's voted. And Lizzie, I think your sneaky trick worked because I know you were playing a sneaky trick with this one. <laughs> so we've got lots of people basically deciding between A and B, which one is the odd one out. And I'm going to close the voting now so Lizzie can tell you the answer. OK, oh, look at that. So it is, again, quite a hard one, like the slow worm. And some of you said A, um, quite a few of you said A, a few of you said B. And then a little more of you said C. So the answer is C. That is the odd one out. A and B are Bs. Um, so we've got a lovely bumblebee in the middle there. And then on the right it is a hoverfly. And it, they look just like bees. A lot of them are mimics. So they look exactly like bees. And they try to look like bumblebees or honeybees or anything like that, um, because they're, again, like the wasp spider, they are harmless. They can't 
harm a fly basically and um, so they've got those colors to protect them and hope hope that they don't get swatted or eaten um when they're visiting flowers and they're pretty cool they are fantastic pollinators um for us so they are so needed just like our bees and our butterflies hoverflies are too so they're beautiful absolutely beautiful okay i think that is the last bit of the game there we go. So there's our hoverfly. And maybe you can keep an eye out for them. They're beautiful. Okay. So I'm going to exit my screen share now. Hopefully you'll be able to see both our faces again. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Lizzie, it's 25 past. So I think we're going to have to do the next bit super fast. I think we can though, because it's really quick, isn't it? It's just an introduction. Definitely. Okay. So let me um, share my screen again. We're going to head on to our craft. We've got a bit of an introduction for it though. So at the moment we have um, lots of birds about and they're starting to get busy. You might have noticed them um, already starting to collect materials for their nests. So we've obviously got to include that in our session. We've got to talk about it. It's happening as we speak and they build wonderful, beautiful and weird nests too. So we are, I'm going to share my screen in a second and our craft is all to do with that today. So all to do with birds collecting materials. Now let me find it. Got it. So it should come on your screen and Hopefully you'll be able to see the screen that's come up. Let me know if you can't and um, we can help you. Oh, perfect. So we are gonna show you some examples of some nests because what our craft is, it is going to be providing nesting materials for birds and it's um, a fun way to do so. So we're gonna take a quick look at a few nests we've got. This is a long-tailed tit's nest on the right. They are beautiful birds and they make this domed shape hidden in thorny bushes like gorse and brambles and that sort of thing to protect them they're absolutely beautiful made of lichen and moss and we've got a question for you guys to so have a look at this question we want to know what do you think long-tailed tits use to stick their nests together do they use spider webs do they use glue do they use frog spawn or do they use nectar from flowers have a think Put them in. We're going to give you five seconds to decide. So decide between you if you're sitting with someone else doing this. Lovely. Oh, we're nearly there. So what do you think they use to stick all the bits together? Okay, should we give them a three, three two, two, one? One. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, most of you said spider webs, a few of you said nectar from flowers, and a couple of you said frog spawn. So the answer is spider webs. They use spider webs to glue their nests together. And that's pretty cool, I think. So they're pretty incredible birds. I love long tailed tits. Okay, so another nest that you might be able to spot as you walk around this spring is a little wren's nest. And as you can see, it's made from dry leaves and moss. It's beautiful. And we want to know. <laughs> what do you think wrens use to make their nest cozy? So what do you think they put on the inside um, to make sure their eggs are safe? Do they put sheep's wool? Do they put petals? Is it feathers or is it grass? What do you think they use to make it nice and soft and comfy? All the votes are coming in fast. Also, you can always spot a wren by its pointy tail. I love wrens, they're beautiful absolutely beautiful they really are pretty and they sing so powerfully and you know their latin name's a funny one as well actually their is latin it? name is troglodytes troglodytes which is fun <laughs> to say and funny because it means cave dweller so they oh. live in little nooks and crannies and caves oh amazing <laughs> <laughs> okay let's see so... what people said shall we We've got feathers as our most common answer. And you guys are right. They do use feathers to line their nest to make it nice and cozy inside. And not only that, but long tail tits do that too. So feathers are really important for these birds. Okay, we've got two more nests to show you. Here is a blackbird's nest. And as you can see, it's made from sort of um, hay-like materials, stems of plants. They can also use mud to glue it all together as well, which is pretty cool. And what we want to know is, what color are blackbird's eggs? Are they white, brown, yellow, or blue? Have a think. 
And if you're not sure, give it a try. We always like people who give it a try <laughs> or shout yeah, at the screen. It's not about whatever the answer, really, is it? It's not about knowing and being right. It's about having a bit of fun and having a guess. Exactly. <laughs> Three, two, last two people, and one. Nice. So most of you said blue and you're right. I've got a picture of them for you now. So hopefully it should come up. These are blackbirds eggs. Look how beautiful they are. They're blue and speckled with a few bits of brown. So they're pretty cool. And what's really good to know is that birds that nest in trees tend to have more colourful eggs than those that nest near the ground because the ones on the ground need to be really, really camouflaged. Whereas the ones in trees don't always have to be. So that is blackbird eggs. Okay, I've got one last one for you. Have a look at this nest on the right. It is a dunnock's nest and we get dunnocks in our garden. But you might notice that there's an odd egg in there. And what we want to know is, why do you think there is an odd egg? Is it because the eggs vary in color? Is it because a cuckoo laid it in a dunnock's nest? Very cheeky. Is it because different birds share nests sometimes? Or is it because it fell in by accident from another nest? What do you think? You can also see on the left, um, the dunnock has been collecting moss. So that's what you want to look out for, is birds carrying things in their beak to bring back to their nest at the moment. Beautiful. And that might be your, part of your challenge this week as a heads up is to look for birds like that. OK, how are we doing? I think, should we give them um, three seconds? Everybody's so good. Oh, you're very generous, Lizzie. Three seconds. Three, two, one. Ooh. <laughs> There's your results. Lovely. Quite decisive, I think. <laughs> I think so too. So you guys, most of you are right. Um, a cuckoo has laid their egg in the Dunnock's nest and that's what it looks like. So that is what a cuckoo will do. If you remember the picture that we saw earlier, um, it's come along and it's cheekily laid it in there while the Dunnock was away. And then that Dunnock will have to raise it without even realising. So very lazy parenting, isn't it? I very. don't want to raise my own chick, so I'm going to just put my chick in your nest and then you can do all the work. Thanks, I'm off. <laughs> I'm off on holiday. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it, guys. They are There are some eggs for you. And as you can see, they all use different materials. A lot of them use moss and leaves and things. So our challenge or craft this week is to leave out some materials for them. And we can do this by leaving it on a hedge if you go and collect leaves or moss or lichen or dried, uh, dried grass, that sort of thing. Or you can make something and have a bit of fun with it. So we've got some options on the screen for you. Top left is something where you can weave the materials in. The bottom is a plastic bottle with holes in that you fill with the materials that you want and make sure there's a stick coming out so a bird can land on it like a bird feeder. You can use willow to make a willow ball at the top or you can just use an old bird feeder that you clean out and stick with loads of material. So our craft this week is going to be the top left picture, so the weaving one. And I'm going to show you how to make that so you can do that at home either for the bird materials or for other things as well. So I'm going to exit this and we will send you these pictures, guys. Um, so don't worry about making notes now. We'll get, get it in the email to you. Right, so to make that woven um, sort of square, if you will, you need to go on a walk first and we need um, four sturdy sticks. So ones that you find on the ground, make sure they don't break or snap really easily. You want them to be sort of good enough that they won't break like I'm doing now. I'm trying to break it and it won't. You want it to be strong so that if a bird does land on this, we don't want it to break straight away. We want it to be strong and sturdy. So you need four sticks. You will also need to collect the materials to put in there. So if you remember the pictures, it's things like we've got moss and lichens that you might find on the ground. You can use dried leaves and dried grass. So I've just chopped some um, from my garden like this one. Um, you can use other really cool soft materials that you find as well. This is called pampas grass. So sometimes they use that. Um, you might find sheep's wool when you're on a walk. Um, so you can use a bit of that. But what we recommend is not to use our own hair 
or our pet's hair because we use chemicals in both and they can harm the birds if they do use them. So collect lots of different things. And then when you're home, you just need some string from home. So that's all you need to get from home. Then you want to make the corners, make the frame first. So it's going, we're going to do a bit of lashing, which is basically means tying around really tightly. And you might have done this before if you've ever done forest schools or just some arts in the woods or whatever it is. So what you want to do is tie two sticks together like this. So it creates a corner. And it doesn't matter which way you wrap it round, just keep wrapping it round in all directions, making sure it's tight and pulled really close together so it doesn't wobble too much. You want it to be a really strong bond. Okay. Right. And maybe you guys have done this before or have you left out bird materials at all? Let us know. We always like to hear your stories. <laughs> I think often the scouts are very good at lashing aren't they it's a classic scout trick oh good definitely. for building shelters and dens and all sorts of things if you've made any nests before or nest boxes or if you've got any birds that you know have nested in your garden or not just birds if you've had any sorts of animals nesting in your garden before tell us in the chat because i will read them out for everybody and if not this is the perfect way to encourage it and if you don't have a garden again don't worry you can put them anywhere you like <laughs> Exactly. Well, that's what's really nice about it. So if you can see, I've tied it round lots and lots in all sorts of directions. So that's what you can do too. And then just tie it off like a normal knot at the end. And you want to do that for all the corners. OK, so eventually you end up with Lizzie's something is very, like... very neat, everyone. But you don't need it to be as neat as Lizzie's. No, <laughs> Lizzie's is actually perfectly neat. But mine are usually a lot messier than that. And it's OK, it'll work just Thing, as long as it's tight <laughs> exactly so hopefully you'll do all four and you'll end up with something like this we figured you didn't want to see us wrapping wool around sticks for half an hour so I've made a little one before and then so that is your first step is to tie all four together the next thing you want to do is to add lots of string around the middle like this so that this is what you can weave the bits of material into and you can either do it like a straight loop across and always make sure it's as tight as it can be so it doesn't slip. So you can do something like this. Ooh, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> We've got great stories in the chat, Lizzie. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, we... Leah Pilmer has a squirrel nesting in their garden and it's at the top of a silver birch tree, which is lovely. Wow. And um, there's one here which I love by Eli or maybe Ellie. And it says, we put some of my dad's old socks in the bird box, but a blue tit moved in and doesn't like them. And we keep seeing them thrown around the garden. And I think if there were old socks in my bedroom, I would kick them out as well. I would <laughs> want I love some smelly socks. It's a great story. That's We've incredible. got so many stories, Lizzie, but I'll let you carry on. That's OK. Um, so you want to do something like that. So you can either do a straight loop all the way around or you can sort of crisscross it. Um, let me show you. So it creates um, lots of crisscrosses as you go down. And that can mean that you can put smaller bits in and they won't fall out as easily. So let me see. Wow, Josh has 10 goldfinches in his garden and Whoa. they feed them with seed, which is lovely. And blue tits in uh, a bush in Amy's garden and a squirrel stealing string from uh, Josh's garden as well. I think that's a different Josh. <laughs> Amazing, really good. That's oh, awesome. and a wren nested above Sarah's front door last summer. That must be really special. <gasps> they and do Alex find some odd gold spaces. Collecting Amazing, wow. lovely stories, everyone. Thanks for sharing. Thank you, guys. It's awesome. It's beautiful, Lizzie, really good. That's Maya amazing. says a bird built its nest in a tree in my garden. And Maya says she came to our holiday club and learned oh. how to lash there. So we've got some expertly trained people, trained by the best. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> oh, well, they were awesome stories. Thank you, guys. Um, so as you can see, you can do two options. One like the top one where it's a straight cross, uh, straight loop around, or you can zigzag it like that. It's up to you and what you want to do. And then you fill it, basically. Once you've done the whole thing, you can fill it like the one I've done here. So can you see? Hopefully you can see this. So we've That's got so pretty. 
<laughs> Thank you. So we've got lots of string across all the way down and I've started to fill it. So it's not full yet, but I've been on a walk and I found some moss. I found this dried grass, which I thought that could be an option for some birds. We've got um, this grass as well from the lawn, feathers as well. If you remember, some line their nests with feathers. So if you find those cute little fluffy ones, they're perfect for birds to line their nest with and make it cozy. So when you go on a walk, find all sorts of different things. Because remember, birds use different types of materials. So you want to help whoever you can, basically. And that is what you can do. And not only can you leave it for nest materials, you can do this with different seasons. If you imagine, you can pick a few flowers, you can make a beautiful seasonal decoration, or you can make a scene as well. I know some people will make uh, mountains and grass and trees out just by weaving lots of bits through. So it's not only just for nesting materials, it's a really great activity to do just when you're out and about or in your garden or in allotment or wherever you are. <laughs> so <clears throat> I think that is the end of the craft. Are we ready for the next bit, Josie? I think we better be, we've got five minutes. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> so, would we like to maybe do our sound of the week now and then we can quickly talk about our challenge afterwards, do you think, Lizzie? Yes, yeah, to definitely get sound of the week in. And then maybe we can just talk about our challenge at the end, set the challenge, and we can send links with the email. How's that sound? That sounds perfect. That sounds really good. I think Lovely. we can't miss our sound of the week. All right, then, guys, no missing out. We can't. <laughs> Everybody loves sound of the week. I can see it already in the chat. Everybody's very excited about sound of the week. So you guys know it is our weird and wonderful wildlife week this week. So that means our sound of the week is going to be particularly weird. And we had to find the weirdest sound we could in Surrey. And it's also quite a special creature. We're not going to tell you what it is, but I would like to know exactly what you think it is. So I think, in fact, Alexander's reminded us, Lizzie, we've missed a key part of sound of the week. In fact, my favourite bit of sound of the week Thank you, Alexander. <laughs> Are we ready? <laughs> and thank you, Alexander. So we can't miss that out. Uh, sound of the week. So are we? Let's see. Okay, tell me, can you hear this sound? Coming through. Yeah, good. Thank you, Leah. And put your guesses in the chat. What do you think it is? Some people are guessing lasers. That's fair. It's a mad sound. Bats and frogs. Woodpeckers. Some people know exactly what it is. I see some people with the right answer. It does sound like a frog. I think it's a frog. The first time I heard that sound, I was sat on a heath. I was sat on a rock in a heath, actually. And I thought maybe there were distant motorbikes driving <laughs> around. Maybe there was a strange frog somewhere nearby. But actually, it's a really, really cool creature. So now I'm going to share my screen with the image so you can see and hear it. And you can see if you were right. So can you see that, Lizzie? I can. Hopefully everyone else can as well. Hopefully you can tell us in the chat if you can see it. We're going to start here, I think. And you might recognise it now. You can see the name on the screen. It is a nightjar, which is a really special bird. They're quite rare. They only spend their summers here and they fly all the way to Africa every single winter, which takes them weeks of flying each direction. And they are magical. So let's have a listen again. We have been told it's very loud. It is very loud. And even in real life, it's a crazy loud sound. That call is them showing their territories, making sure that all the other night jars in the area know that this is their patch. 
and they only sing at night time in around June and July. And you can go on walks with my colleagues at Surrey Wildlife Trust in the summer. Hopefully we'll be able to go on walks again and we will be able to take you out and show you. But even if you just go to uh, Wigley and Ockham Common is a good place, Trobham Common, as long as if you have a dog, you keep it on the lead is really important because like you can see in this picture, they nest on the ground. So you've got to be really careful with dogs, but then you can hear them flying around and calling like that all evening. Around dusk is the best time to hear them. And they're amazing, absolutely brilliant creatures. Very, very special indeed. Beautiful and so, so well camouflaged. <laughs> amazing. I mean, you, can t t you can't even tell where the bird begins and the log ends. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'd love to see one. I've yet to see one. Um, so that's on my list of creatures to find one summer. Okay. They are very special. So our challenge this week, That's guys. Yeah. Oh, so as we did in the craft, we looked at um, materials that birds use to nest with. So our challenge this week for you is three parts. Okay. Number one, um, you can go on a walk and see if you can spot the birds collecting nesting material already. I've seen some with um, twigs in their mouths going along, especially things like um rooks like big black birds like that they're already starting so head on a walk and see if you can spot any already trying to do that then if you want you can level up and do our craft and leave some nesting material for the birds it doesn't have to be what we made in this session it could be leaving a pile either on a hedge or in a corner for the birds it could be even uh, not even your, in your garden, you can do that in a park. If you leave a few materials out, you don't have to have a garden to do this. And we'll send you those other options. So if you don't want to do the craft itself, you've got other options to do too. Now, third, so first one is to see if there's any birds getting busy already with their making their nest. Second is to leave some materials out. And the third thing is if you haven't got one already, you can make a bird box. And it's something to do with adults, but it's really fun to do. And we'll send you a sheet on how to do that. So if you want to, that could be your third option as well. Um, so that is your challenge this week. It's all to do in nesting birds. But also, if you do spot any weird and wonderful wildlife, we would love to know about it. And especially now things are starting to come out because it's spring. OK, so that is your challenge this week. Amazing. As always, please tell us all about these amazing things you do. I've had so many wonderful emails this week from people who've been out and about exploring, having a go at our craft, showing me what they've done. And this week, we love it, not just to send us your art, as we ask for every week. If you've been creating beautiful pictures, send them in to us because I love seeing your artwork. But also, if you've been on an adventure, take a picture, send me that. If you've been making one of our crafts, send a picture of that for me. Or if you see anything wild or any stories you'd like to share, I always love to get your email. So it doesn't have to be art specifically everything goes in our gallery. I might even rename it at some point soon to uh, Explorers Gallery of Everything because we just put everything in there now. So thank you so much, everybody. Remember, sign up for our following sessions all the way to the end of March now. And if you haven't signed up for each individual session, you won't get the link for each individual session and it changes every week. So make sure you sign up for them all so you don't miss out. And please do share it with all of your friends. Tell everyone. And Lizzie's looking excited because she's remembered the theme for next week and she is going wild. What is it, Lizzie? It's hedgehogs, my favourite. <laughs> It's going to be so, absolutely <laughs> mad. <laughs> I love hedgehogs. So that is our theme next week. So if you want to join and learn all about them, join us. It will be lots of fun, I promise. <laughs> if we can control Lizzie's wildness about hedgehogs. <laughs> so tell us hedgehog stories as well if you'd like to over the week. If you want to share anything about hedgehogs, it's also fine. So I'm going to share my screen with you now. We're going to say goodbye and we're going to leave you with our art gallery of all things that people have been sending in to me through the week. So hopefully we'll see you next time. Bye. See you later, guys. Thank you for joining.